Welcome back to the next edition of Talent Talk, episode 30 of this series. And as we did last week, this week we'll be catching up with another former Osprey turn pro, this time in former UNF pitcher Brian Baker. So really thankful to have the tall righty on for the interview today. He's been in Florida for a bit now, even before the lockdowns began to happen around the nation after being brought in as a non-roster spring training invitee for the Toronto Blue Jays organization, so a big deal there. And once the news was released that things were going to be shut down, Baker headed up to the panhandle where he is with his parents. So for those of you who don't know his background, Baker was a 2014, 15, and 16 member of the UNF baseball team before being drafted by the Colorado Rockies in the 11th round of the 2016 draft. Baker was a presence on the mound for UNF, standing at 6'6". He racked up 14 wins on 144 Ks, posting well over 150 innings in the Navy and Gray. And the tall righty was a part of the 2015 team that won 45 games and the 2016 team that posted a Sun Best 39 wins. So from there, he joined the Rockies farm system before being traded to the Blue Jays. And from there, his minor league journey really boomed, sending him all the way up to AAA, where he had some success last year. And that's a story in and of itself, just the day that he got promoted. So we'll get into that. It's a fun talk. And that and more from Baker as we, we go into UNF movies, summer ball, travel stories, and now living life during this quarantine. So thanks for being on today, Brian. I'm sure a lot of people will enjoy this one. Awesome to be here, man. Thanks for having me. Of course. Um, been following you. I know a lot of us at UNF have been following you ever since you got uh, to UNF and got picked up um, by the Rockies back in 2016. Um, now we're following you in a little bit different way. Now the whole sports world is what's things been like for you? Um, to be honest, I keep on, uh, I keep on thinking it's a dream, but uh, it's, uh, it's been a lot different, you know, especially with uh, the timing of the whole thing. Um, you know, just kind of getting towards the the middle of spring training and, you know, we're getting ready to go to uh full season, get, get everything going. And, then this kind of gets dropped down on us. So it's been a, an adjustment period where you're kind of just going to go through it. You know, um, I'm back home now with my, uh, staying with my parents, just trying to uh, social distance and uh, just get as much work in as I can right now, um, you know, without being able to have a facility to go to or anything like that. So, and, you know, we don't have a timetable for when we can even get back to play. So it's, uh, it's definitely been, difficult but uh i mean just controlling what i can control right now and trying to stay ready yeah so when you got that news and then you're probably in your first week or so what was going through your mind and then the mind of other pitchers that you were talking to like what was the discussion like how are we going to stay in shape what are we going to do throwing program wise yeah um yeah that's uh, <laughs> a couple of the probably thousands of questions that popped up yeah but um yeah, I mean, like I said, it all comes down to the the timetable to where we don't know, we didn't know whether we should shut down or like how long this will last or so the kind of the ground that a lot of the people are taking right now, uh, a lot of players, I, I should say, are just kind of staying like maintaining the shape that you're in just in case, you know, something pops up, just be ready. Um, so that's kind of the that's kind of the mindset that I'm taking into it in terms of lifting and, uh, throwing, um, just maintaining, um, my, like staying in shape and trying to, um, just maintain and rather than, you know, shut down and then not be ready if something, if we kick back up, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What does that look like? So for like a starting pitcher, for example, who is used to saying, you know, pitching every five days, are they going to recommend, Hey, you know, do your normal throwing program and then, you know, on the fifth day, treat it like a mini start. Is that kind of a thought or is it just like you're going to do your off season long toss program or something like that? So uh, I'm, I'm very glad I'm a reliever at this point yeah. because the starter, <laughs> the starters definitely had it harder during this um, mm -hmm. with, I mean, it all comes down to like facilities and stuff too. I know like, um, I mean, at, at the time that when everything got canceled, um, like they were already built up to to be ready to go like five innings or so, which is almost, you know, game ready because um, they're normally going to go six or seven or more. Um, so, yeah, I can't really speak for them too much. But, I mean, it, it all comes down to facilities and stuff too. So, like, 
I'm sure they're trying to keep them a little bit more, I guess, game ready than us relievers because it's a little bit easier for us to adjust because we don't have to throw as many pitches and stuff. Um, but yeah, I know a lot of guys, if they have access to something, they can get on a mound and simulate a bullpen and um, do it that way. But like for me, I don't have, I don't have any of that. So right now I'm thrown into a wall, yeah, uh, which is, which is a little bit different, mm -hmm. but I mean, it's at least it's getting arm moving. I remember uh, some of those days of throwing into a wall and the ball gets pretty worn down after a while. So do you yeah. have a bucket of balls that you throw with, or do you just use that same ball that bounces back or just use the same ball, but um, luckily they sent us some like the plyo balls to where it's not an actual baseball with the mm -hmm. seams and stuff. So like you can, you can throw it against the wall as hard as you can. And it kind of just falls straight down instead of bouncing all over the place, which is nice. Uh, sure. Until, until it explodes. So I'll probably yeah. be another one, but <laughs> it'll be all right. So do you have any, is there anyone in the area too that you can toss with, or has it just been wall work so far? No, just wall work so far. Um, I haven't really reached out to, I mean, there's really not many guys that I even know around here that are still playing, but, um, yeah, it's been mainly a wall and uh, garage workouts and uh, I'm doing some running. On the, I live on a golf course, so I have like a, some open space to run and stuff. So it's been, uh, it's been different. Whatever, whatever it takes, got to get creative. I yeah, know that exactly. <laughs> Stroman, of course, is always out on social media posting his crazy bullpen places, and I'm like, must be nice. He's got, he's got a doctor to go through a bullpen. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not quite in that situation, but yeah, uh, yeah good for him. <laughs> Most guys, I'd imagine, are. Uh, are there a lot of guys that you keep in touch with uh, right now from, you know, in the minors and pl playing ball in college? What are they saying to you? Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of the guys are c kind of in a, a similar scenario. Um, some of my buddies still have, you know, guys around them that they can at least play catch with and stuff and or, like, get access to a mound. And uh, those, those are really lucky ones if you could have access to a mound and a catcher mm -hmm. that you could still throw bullpens. Um, those are, I mean, that's a very good situation to be in right now for the time. But, um, yeah, that's kind of rare, I would say. Most people really don't have, um, like, a mound or a, a catch partner or a catcher to actually throw, like, bullpens to and stuff. So it's definitely difficult. Right. It's, I mean, it's obviously that weird disadvantage that a lot of people will be coming back. And whenever that time is, it's like, well, I had a mound to throw off of for a month and a half. You did yeah. it two months. Yeah. You know, it's just like, <laughs> what do you do? You know, it's just yeah. how, how the cookie crumbles. But yeah. so you were, um, you, you were a non roster invitee. So congrats on that, though. That was, that Thank was you. really cool to see. Um, just go through where you were when the news got released. And I, I know I was listening to Donnie's interview earlier with the iCubs, and I was just like, boom, next day, we got to get out of here. Was it kind of like that for you? Um, so it was like that, but it was stretched out over like two or three days because mm -hmm. when, when the first league, I think it was the NBA, maybe his first one, mm -hmm. where it was just like, we're suspending it. Yeah. Then everybody else was like, okay, something's going to happen with us if they're doing that. So everybody started like, you know, um, getting ready for what was going to happen. Um, and like – like we've been talking about, like with access to facilities and stuff, I was like, personally, I was like, I need to stay here as long as I can because mm -hmm. this is a top notch facility. And I'm, if I have to go home, then I'm not going to have much to, to work with. Um, so I stuck around for a few days and then um, they ended up uh, having to close it down, obviously with all this, with the coronavirus going on. Um, so yeah, it was, uh, I had a few days to kind of, get everything ready and uh tell the parents to go to the grocery store and get some extra food for when i get home so <laughs> uh, but yeah it was a uh, like a two or three day kind of uh nervous fest <laughs> yeah just people scrambling and i'm sure yeah. for anybody in in minor leagues that's international or um home is overseas or something like that it's even a whole other situation right. and scenario no, yeah. with. Mm -hmm. I can't even imagine I mean I I had to drive you know six hours to get mm -hmm. home so I mean I had it better than most in terms of of uh getting to a location where you can kind of withstand this this virus so yeah I'm, I'm, I'm I know a lot of guys had it way worse um 
you know, I've had buddy, buddies that live in Seattle that, you know, that was one of the worst places mm-hmm. that they couldn't even, uh, they couldn't even get to like a flight home. So there's some, yeah, there's some scenarios out there that it's, uh, it came up on people fast and it's, yeah, you have to adjust with it. It's tough. So obviously now you're with your parents back home and it's nice to be able to have some extra time. What's it been like, uh, being home? Um, it's been good actually. I was kind of dreading it a little bit. Um, not, not necessarily just with my parents, just in terms of, I felt like I was going to have nothing to do and I was Mm going to be like just this caged animal. Yeah. (laughs) Um, but after the first few days, I, I, um, when I kind of like got on a routine, uh, was when I like right now it's, it's been good. Actually. I, when I got on like a routine where I was lifting, throwing and like doing arm care and stuff, and then just finding other little stuff to do around, uh, Mm -hmm. around the house. And my dad's, uh, always got some kind of project going on. So I've been helping out with some of that stuff and, uh, got two grandmas that need their, their, their house is cleaned and kept up. So I've been, I've been staying pretty busy. Good. Yeah. Giving back to the fam, you know, it's always, (laughs) always a good thing. Always a good time for that. I've definitely felt that I've had more, I'm not in the same uh, state as my parents, but I've definitely had more conversations with them than probably ever, ever since I moved out of the house. So, yeah. so it's probably not the worst thing to have happen um, for, yeah. if, if you're able to stay healthy and have food around. Mm-hmm. Um, so just talk about before this went down, how were you feeling physically and how was it to get that um, invite? Oh, it was really cool. It was... Um it was something that I kind of expected a little bit after mm-hmm. the season last year, but it's one of those things where you really don't know until you get the news. So I found out in, um, in January that they, they waited, they made us wait to find out uh, <laughs> pretty late, but I found out and then um, in January and then I had kind of been uh, ramping up a little bit earlier this off season to make sure I was ready for, um, big league spring training if I did get the invite so I was ready for it and um yeah I mean it was like uh I didn't really know what to expect because I'd never I'd never even thrown in a a big league spring training game or anything so it was it was definitely different um but yeah you definitely don't want to go back after experiencing that but uh, it was really fun really fun um just go go into your whole path. I mean, there has been a lot of evolution in your minor league career. Obviously it's always, a lot of people are getting traded now, but it's unique to have a trade kind of in the middle of what would be your minor league career so far. Um, what was that trade like? And you kind of took off, it seemed like statistically from the outsider's perspective, once you got that trade, why do you think that was the case? Um, it's uh I don't know there's something to be said for like a fresh start and like a new atmosphere I think like Mm -hmm. going into it obviously I mean I didn't know anybody uh, when I got traded over and I had no idea that I was getting traded until it happened so everything was just kind of a uh, a blur and a shock Um, so yeah when I got over I mean the Blue Jays were really good about everything Um, made me feel right at home and they just kind of let me be me instead of um, trying to nitpick at certain things and making me um pitch a certain way they kind of at first just kind of let me do my own thing and I think that um like made me comfortable in in my own skin and just kind of go out there and have fun and Mm -hmm. um I've just been doing that ever since really and I think uh I think like I said the fresh start and like trying to have to prove myself in front of new people and stuff I I kind of put that pressure on myself which which helped Mm -hmm. So you, you, you started at advanced day, um, and then you, you bumped up, got bumped up to New Hampshire. Um, Mm -hmm. and then boom, it was to Buffalo. Um, and you just kept progressing. Uh, what, what in your repertoire was really working, um, during that period? Um, I, um, last year I focused a little bit more on, uh, throwing a higher percentage of off-speed pitches and then when I did throw fastball I would I would elevate a good amount um, which is kind of my bread and butter so I was just playing to my strengths just like um, like I said like what the Blue Jays have encouraged from the beginning um, and then I kind of just got on a, um, just got in a good rhythm and and kept riding that wave so 
yeah, last year was uh, was really good. It kind of like set the template for like what I think I can I can do in a for for the long run. Mm-hmm. So, how was that experience in AAA? And you had a lot of really impressive names come through offensively and on the mound. I mean, if you just go through the roster, and obviously the guys that get you know their option down real quick for for a short time, they'll they'll come through. Even you know Clay Buckles, Clayton Richard, all those guys, and then. Mm-hmm. You had, you know, Guerrero Jr. on the Boba Shet, um, playing up there, so guard. What was that kind of environment like for you to be a part of that? It was so different. It was so different um, just being in that atmosphere, even from double-A, where obviously the level of play is still really good. But you get up there, and I went from being, like, I would say, like, maybe one of the older kind of guys in double-A. Not, I mean, probably middle of the pack, mm-hmm. but – and then getting to AAA, and I was like probably the second or third youngest guy on the team, and I was just kind of uh, taken back by it's just such a role reversal. Um, and then just being around, like you said, being around those guys that being around guys that have, have been in the big leagues and have uh, been around the block a time or two. So it was fun mm-hmm. to be around guys that um, were very professional and like knew how to knew how to go about their business and then you can really pick up off those guys and uh kind of see the way things are supposed to be done um i thought it was really cool what what are some guys that you kind of uh they might not be household names but what are some guys that you saw at that level that you kind of picked up on and picked up on what they were doing um there's a few i mean there's there's several guys that were going up and down when i was up in triple a so um in terms of bullpen guys, um, a guy named Jason Adam, who's uh, who's been up and down a pretty good bit, but he's a couple years older, and he uh, just the way he handled, you know, going up, pitching really well in the big leagues, and then, you know, it's not always um, it's not always about how you do, but sometimes you just have to get sent back down just for the roster to work mm-hmm. out, and just the way he handled it, you know, when I'm sure it's there's frustration there where. You go up right. there and you're pitching really well and you're like, oh man, I should stay, you know, mm-hmm. but sometimes that's just the business and uh, came back down to AAA for a little bit and handled it like a pro and just the way he went about that was kind of took a, I took notice of that. It was really cool. Um, but there's other guys too, rehabbing guys like, uh, like, like Clayton, Richard, and mm-hmm. um, it was kind of the same thing. Just the way they go about their business was, uh, was really impressive. Mm-hmm. When you were at AAA, um, did you feel like, wow, this has been a long journey considering, you know, I've been in Grand Junction, I've been in Asheville. Did, you, did it feel like you were looking at it like in that broad perspective or when you got there, you were just like, yeah, this makes sense. This is my next step. Yeah. Um, so I, I felt like uh, I belonged. So like, when I was pitching really well in double A, I was, was looking for that chance. And when it mm-hmm. came, I was like, I think I'm ready for this. And then I, my first like three or four outings, I, well, I threw really well. So I was like, all right, I'm, I'm good. You know, I'm mm-hmm. good to go. And from that point on, it was just all like looking forward. Um, so I didn't really look at it in that scope, yep. but it is, it is pretty cool to, to think about, um, you know, four years prior, I was, I was giving up, you know, 450 foot homers and in, in the, <laughs> the, the elevation in Colorado. Um, did you feel that you changed a lot as a pitcher um, in the minor leagues? Yeah. Um, probably, probably as much as you can, honestly. Um, especially going from being a starter mm-hmm. um, and then going into my, my first full season after Grand Junction the next year, I kind of was like a kind of a slow transition to being um, like a bullpen guy and then like a long relief guy and then kind of pushed back to the, to the end of the end of the game, like the harder I threw really. Um, so yeah, was, if you saw me pitch in, in Grand Junction and you saw me pitch now, like you probably wouldn't even know that it was the same, the same person. Um, and that really, I think going back to um, my last summer ball team in college, going up to the Cape and playing up there and having to be reliever there kind of helped me for the transition. 
-hmm. because I experienced success up there as a reliever and I, that was the first time in my life I'd ever really done it. So, um, that kind of gave me the confidence going forward. And then like, once I actually did get switched to a reliever, um, in Asheville in 27, 2017, uh, I kind of just hit it, um, hit it in stride and, and I, I loved it. I mean, looking back at it now, I wish I would have been a reliever longer. Mm -hmm. I like, I like it so much more than starting. So do you, do you, do you air it out a little bit more now? Oh yeah. You don't have to worry yeah. about pacing mm -hmm. yourself at all. Yeah. So, <laughs> That's probably the fun part. <laughs> yeah. You go out there and especially when you know, I mean, for the past, I guess two years now, I haven't thrown anything more than two innings normally. So mm -hmm. it's, um, yeah, it's definitely nice to go out there and, and let it eat and have some fun. Uh, mm -hmm. it's just kind of fits more my, uh, my repertoire than like having to roll through a lineup a few times. So, yeah. So that's interesting. You kind of had that first touch of relieving in the Cape Cod league. Um, what, what was it like mentally at that time? Were you kind of using that as saying, Hey, this might be a reality if, you know, when I do get drafted, cause you probably figured you were. Was that kind of a yeah. the strategy there? Um, I mean, I'm sure, I mean, that was definitely part of it. But at, at that point, um, being in that league, I was like, I think I was like kind of a late invite to the team. And um, for the first couple of weeks, it was like, we have to make cuts. So I was like, you're, you have to, you're pitching for your, your livelihood in terms <laughs> of like, do you want, if you want to stay there mm -hmm. for the summer. And um, obviously being from a smaller school and not being a big name guy, um, I wasn't going to hop right in the starting rotation. So I was just, I was getting whatever innings I could take. And, sure. um, I did well and got, ended up getting to stay the whole summer. So, um, that was really more what I was thinking. It was just like, you know, that's the only way I'm going to get to pitch. So I might as well, might as well make the best of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was that? What was that summer like? And we talked a little bit off air playing with Alonzo, um, and then a couple guys that have, have made the major leagues and then Nick yeah. Solak, the weird connection. I played, just played wiffle ball in my backyard and there you're playing that the <laughs> Cape, Cape Cod League with him. What was that summer like and what did you see um, baseball wise? Um, it was, it was really fun. Um, like I said, it was, it was like proving myself there to make sure I could stay. And, um, and then I think after the first like two weeks where it was like, okay, you're on the team. Um, uh, got to relax a little bit more and um, settle into the new role is really fun. And then just the, the talent up there is, is unbelievable. I mean, it's, it's known as the best college league, mm -hmm. college summer league for a reason. So um, yeah, I mean, not only our team, but I mean, there's so many guys that um, are either top prospects or they're already, you know, in the big leagues, mm -hmm. um, you know, our cleanup hitter was Pete Alonzo. So, and then Solak is, he made it to the big leagues already. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He made it to. Um, he got shipped around as well a little bit. Came in the league with the Yankees, then went to the Rays, made it to Durham, and then um, got traded to Texas's organization. Right. Played with Nashville right. for a little bit, and then got a call up to to the Rangers. So I just saw he built a, a wiffle ball field in his backyard. So I guess I I have to take credit for that um, inspir <laughs> <laughs> inspiration uh, that nice. he has for there. But um. So you go up to the Cape and then you've had, you know, quite a bit of travel experience, West coast to East coast in the minor leagues. So you're out in Cali, um, out in Colorado, out in Florida, out in New York, um, a couple other stops. What, what are there any, of any favorites, any favorite stops, any favorite stadiums? Um, so my favorite, uh, like home city, I guess was definitely Asheville, mm -hmm. uh, low A for the Rockies in 2017 like the the city is just like you know, it's 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 weird honestly but it's uh people it's gas so, it up though yeah <laughs> man it's, it's yeah it's really fun and it was kind of a a weird old ballpark too it kind of just matched the the character of the city mm -hmm. honestly but it was super fun to play there and that that whole league was um especially for being so low on the totem pole in the minors of being like a low a league the south atlantic league it was such a great uh, league for travel and for stadiums. There was a bunch of cool cities and the stadiums were nice, especially for, for being only low A. So yeah, weirdly that's been my favorite stop probably um, in terms of like a team that I was playing with. Mm -hmm. Any uh, favorite um, 
road trip stories or any any favorite any favorite way to pass the time on the road of yours oh man i've t- i could probably write a book with all the different stories maybe you should i mean i feel like that's a great <laughs> avenue for minor leaguers that have been around i mean a lot of people yeah. would read that <laughs> we got some time on our hands right now yeah too. right we might have to start writing just um, get the notes down <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean there's there's been uh you know, rookie ball with uh, the Pioneer League, we probably, I mean, we, we took two trips to Montana that were uh, 12 plus hour, or I think my, one of might have been 16 hours on a bus. And one <laughs> of those trips, uh, the AC stopped working. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, so that was good. <laughs> definitely an interesting one. Um, probably the craziest story uh, was last year, actually, when I got promoted to AAA. Um, so I'm playing for New Hampshire at the time. We have a Sunday game in, uh, Hartford playing my old buddies, the Rockies double A team. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I had actually gone out to dinner with some of them the, the night before it was, uh, Saturday night when it hung out with a couple of my buddies from the Rockies wake up on Sunday. We have to check out of the hotel and we'll have like a later afternoon game. So the bus just takes us to eat lunch at some like strip mall. And, uh, just got my food and our manager uh, called me and asked me where I was. I was like, um, you <laughs> just like, saw me. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting food. <laughs> and so I told him and he, he like showed up like a few minutes later and showed me a text from our, uh, from our farm director saying that they need me in Pawtucket today. Oh, and no. this was, <laughs> this was probably 11 like 11 or 11 30 and um the game was at one and because uh, like they're literally out of pitching so yikes um so i scramble around work with our trainer to try to get an uber to take us because it's like an hour and a half uber from hartford to pawtucket and i had to go to the field get all my stuff and, all, and everything so i get in the first uber and uh he like starts the trip or whatever and sees how long it is that's what i was gonna ask i was just gonna say how did you even get an uber i feel like i take it i take a flight from the jacksonville airport to unf and they see that it's like you know even 30 minutes and they're like nope not taking you (laughs) (laughs) so this guy yeah the first guy was like yeah i can't take you i got other stuff to (laughs) that i gotta do so i had already loaded all my stuff into his car or whatever so i got out called my trainer and I'm like, this guy can't take me. We need another Uber. So we scramble around. I think it was like the third or fourth option. We finally get a guy that I guess had a lot of free time and was, was down to take a nice Uber ride. So I, I got into Uber. I don't even know when we left, but um, I showed up. I basically, I, long story short, I show up to Pawtucket in the sixth inning. That's what I was. Yeah. Um, in the middle of the game and like run into the clubhouse, uh, have to find an extra Jersey, extra <laughs> pants, and all that stuff. Walk out to the dugout, meet the manager. I'd never met him. And he's like, you know, Hey, nice to meet you, but uh, you can get down to the bullpen and start warming <laughs> up. Cause we're, we're probably going to need to throw. And I was like, okay, just got it off. I mean, I haven't had anything to eat because I, had you didn't get a lunch. chance to buy it. yeah yeah i just ordered lunch and i had to leave and then i had a pack of crackers that's all i'd had that day so i'm like oh boy go down to the bullpen <laughs> at this point it's the seventh inning and we were tied i think it was like two to two or three to three and my buddy finishes the, the eighth inning and then or i guess no yeah we score a run in the in the top of the eighth <laughs> so so now we're up i'm like oh it's gonna be a safe situation and then um it was like the end of the line for the guy before me and they're, they're like yeah he's at his pitch limit or whatever like you have to go in so i go in um i don't think i've ever had that much adrenaline in my life i was just i it was half of it was a blur but uh 
I end up uh, getting the save. Uh, it Wild. was like it got a little bit sketchy too. I think it was runners on first and third, uh, two outs, and like their cleanup hitter was up. And I, uh, <laughs> I struck him out on three pitches, and like I was like, I finally came to after after I got the save, and I was like, holy cow! And then to add to that, I. <laughs> get off the field and everybody's like telling me to hurry up and get into the locker room. And I'm just trying to like calm down. <laughs> like, like, this, has been, this has been the craziest day. And I'm like, why is everybody rushing me into the locker room? And they're like, yeah, you got to sing. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And they're like, uh, the player of the game has to sing a song, a karaoke song of their choice. And everybody else like kind of joins in whatever. It's like our winning, like they do that for every win, I guess. And I had no idea. So I I'm imme- immediately, rushed into the locker room after the game, can't even kind of digest what just happened. And I'm singing uh, Josh Turner, your man in front of 25 people <laughs> that I don't really know very well. So um, yeah, that's probably the craziest, definitely the craziest uh, story of, of my minor league career and probably of my life so far. <laughs> I think, I think for a lot of people's sports career, um, that's probably, probably <laughs> the case. Um, Cause you're like, I'm being judged in so many ways right now. I'm being judged as a pitcher. You don't even know me. I, yep. I, I mean, judged as a karaoke, karaoke singer, you know, I don't even know where my stuff is. You know, <laughs> I almost gave a blow a save, you know, yep. it's like, <laughs> And, and yeah, you're probably was, on that uh, on that mound against that guy. It's like this would happen. I would I would have <laughs> guys on the corner against the cleanup hitter. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Do you know what pitch was, you got uh, him on? Uh, fastball up. It's like yeah. most of my strikeouts. But yeah, it was. Uh, man, yeah, that was a crazy day. Um, that's wild. Yeah. <laughs> what was that Uber trip like? What were you What were you thinking in that Uber trip? Oh man, I was trying to keep track of the game to see if I could even like get in. Cause it, at one point it was moving along pretty fast. I'm like, I'm not even going to get here in time. Um, and then I was also like letting my family know that I was, I had been promoted and stuff, but also trying to keep focus a little bit. I didn't want to start celebrating too early cause I knew I might have a pitch. So, so yeah, it was, it was definitely interesting. Talked to, uh, talked to the Uber driver for a little bit. Nice guy. Yeah. Uh, Hopefully. <laughs> we had plenty to talk about an hour and a half. Yeah, right. So. I'm sure you had plenty to grill you on. When you get in the <laughs> bullpen, um, how many pitches do you throw? You know, it's always like if you have more time, you're like, I'm going to throw a few before I tell them to get down. You're just like, yeah. get down, dude. It's like, yeah. Yeah, I, I got down there and said hey to the couple of the guys, the bullpen guys that I knew. and uh, But there wasn't much time to catch up because uh, I had to start getting loose. So I, I needed to start stretching stuff and – um yeah as soon as we scored I, at that point it was still up in the air if I was going to go in or get the save or whatever so we scored the run and I was like oh crap like I'm definitely gonna have to go in mm-hmm. so I immediately I just start firing away uh I probably threw 10 or 15 it was it was, it was enough time to get ready but it sure. was uh yeah it was definitely interesting hey that's uh that's when adrenaline counts right you gotta have yeah. it for something <laughs> <laughs> yeah. definitely um, What's what's Buffalo been like? Obviously, as a guy growing up in Florida, and then you're up here in these northern climates. Uh, how is it playing up there? So, luckily, when I got when I got promoted, it was late enough in the season mm-hmm. to where I kind of missed all of like the really bad mm-hmm. uh, cold weather. So, honestly, when I got there, it was it was perfect. Um, High seventies. Yeah, I mean, it was yeah, it was great, and the city was awesome. I love the city and. It's you can tell it's like a, definitely a sports sports town, mm-hmm. um, and it was it was it was a lot different playing in that stadium. That stadium holds like so many people compared to what I've been playing in. Um, so there's there's some games where we'd we'd get you know twelve thousand thirteen thousand people, um, which is way more than I had played in front of before. So it was really fun. It was awesome. Mm-hmm. So going back to um, we started with talking about travel, and then when you're in the Cape League, you're a guy from UNF playing um in such a high league like that and summer leagues can kind of get weird where you get some division two guys there get some nai guys that really are killing it and they get play in the north woods or they play in the mink league or something Mm -hmm. um but you're thinking to yourself you know i'm worthy of playing in the cape cod league and then you go all the way back to you know unf's the school that i'm going to that's why i'm you know that's where i'm going why was it unf for you and um you know what what influenced that decision? Um, 
so in high school, I, um, I played basketball and baseball Mm -hmm. and, um, was, was equally, I would say I was equally devoted to both for my first three years of high school. So I didn't like, I didn't have a ton of time on my hands to really, uh, hone in on pitching specifically. So I was playing, I played positions and stuff too. Um, so I really didn't know if I was even going to be a pitcher or anything until like my mm-hmm. junior year. Um, I started throwing a little bit harder and, um, even then I was like, I might, I might try to play basketball in college. I might play baseball or whatever. So I ended up, um, I don't know how, um, Judd Loveland, he mm-hmm. scouted me, um, some summer tournament or something. Um, so kind of got the ball rolling a little bit and, uh, he um, came to see me a couple more times and they were one of the only schools that actually was offering me um, like something more than like a walk-on spot, like a preferred mm-hmm. walk-on or whatever. So I talked to some other schools, but nothing really interested me that much. And um, it really came down to Samford and uh, UNF. Uh, those are the only two schools I actually visited. Um, and I, I mean, I visited UNF and I, I loved the campus and, mm-hmm. uh, I liked uh, the coaches and everything, and uh, <clears throat> it was um, still. I mean, it's five hours from my house, so it's a, it's a good, it's a good close uh, distance away. And I, uh, I thought about it for about a week after I visited, and I, I told I told my family like that's that's where I want to go because I mean they they weren't uh, opposed to Sanford either. It's a really good school and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's kind of. Uh, I really didn't have too many options, but as soon as mm-hmm. I visited, I was like, I think this is the place. Mm-hmm. Uh, going back to basketball, I mean, that that's what I read in the bio. I mean, you've, you know, you're all, all district player, um, really had a lot of accolades in high school as a basketball player. Was it a thought that you were going to play college basketball too? Um, yeah, I think, I mean, I definitely could have, but mm-hmm. when I, um, I started to excel a little bit at pitching, I figured – there was um, there was more there's a better chance of me going playing professionally as a as a pitcher as opposed to a mm-hmm. basketball player. So at that point, I I still played my senior year, but um, after I committed to UNF, I was like I'm gonna I'm just gonna um, I'm just gonna focus on pitching and and try to go play professionally because um, I knew I I mean growing up I played a bunch of sports, but I always wanted to be something. Uh, I didn't want to, I didn't want to work a desk job or anything. I definitely wanted to play something professionally. So, yeah. so you get drafted by the pirates too, right? Is that, is that correct? In 2013, yeah. Yeah. um, you know, high 40th round, obviously, um, you say no. And then you, you go play collegiately. You really progressed a lot, um, at UNF too, and really worked yourself into a consistent starter, um, how would you describe yourself as a pitcher in, in college? I mean, obviously similar, relied on power a lot, strikeout pitcher, but anything particular? Um, so like I said, it kind of uh, playing basketball and like splitting my attention for those years in high school, I wasn't developed at all. So mm-hmm. I, a lot of, of my success, like in high school, especially was just like throwing it by people. And I wasn't, um, I wasn't a pitcher really. I was more of a thrower. Uh, mm-hmm. So I had to, I had to transform at UNF a little bit. Freshman year was a struggle. Um, and then I had to, I mean, just learning the game in general, um, along with working on my command and working on some kind of secondary stuff I could throw in the zone other than just trying to throw fastballs by people. Um, mm-hmm. was uh, That took about a year and a half. So um, it was uh, definitely a learning process um, that – I'm glad I'm, I'm really glad I went to college and, and did all that there because going straight into the professional ranks would have been really tough. Mm-hmm. You did have a, a quite a few strikeouts, 144, and then a couple games were, you know, double digit. You had that one against Penn that was, that really stood out um, for you. Do you have a favorite mound to pitch on in the A-Sun? I know a lot of pitchers, they're particular about kind of the environment. Some, some pitchers will be like, I feel like I'm closer to the plate at this, at this stadium or what? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the case actually with Dunedin Stadium, our spring training okay. stadium for the Blue Jays, and, and that mound is amazing. Um, <laughs> in the A Sun, 
Honestly, uh, selfishly, I, I got to say UNF's mound because okay. I, I put so much work in it on myself. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> us and me and like Tyler DuPont and Alex right. Smith and a couple of the guys, we, we, we would did the heavy lifting on the mound. So I like that one. Um, Lipscomb's facilities are always really nice too. Lips, mm-hmm. Lipscomb, Stetson, and UNF are probably my three favorite mounds. Do you have a favorite uh, a game that you pitched in at UNF? Um, man, there's several, um, that I pitched in personally, probably, uh, uh, UNC Wilmington, my junior year, they were like the best hitting team in the country coming into the weekend. They came to our place and they're, I think they're ranked top 25 Mm -hmm. and, uh, we ended up sweeping them in like some of the craziest games I've ever seen. It was, it was awesome. But, uh, yeah, I remember that Friday night game when I pitched, I, I probably threw a hundred or so pitches and I only threw like 50 fastballs. So I was like, you were mixing never, it. Yeah. I never pitched like that in my life. So that mm-hmm. game sticks out to me against a really good team and having success with kind of doing stuff I'd never done before. It was, mm-hmm. that was a, that was a fun, fun game and fun series. You guys had a couple good years, 15 and 16 were awesome years uh, for you guys went in combined like 80 some games. Mm-hmm. Um, do you, t- do you keep in touch with any particular guys or any talk to more? Or obviously, Dr- Donnie, Drew are all at AAA. It doesn't mean you talk to them the most, but any guys that you still keep in touch with? Yeah, uh, a lot of the guys, honestly. I think that's one of the reasons why we were so good. We were all really close, and uh, we had some characters on those teams where mm-hmm. uh, I'd say the, t- the team chemistry was really good. Um, but uh, Alex Merritt and uh, – Blake Boyles were two of my mm-hmm. roommates. Um, they were they were my age that uh, I'm obviously still really close with. And Keith Skinner, my catcher from mm-hmm. uh, sophomore junior year, still close with him. And obviously, I still talk to Drew. Well, I mean, me and Drew were in the same. We're both with the Rockies after right UNF too. So yeah, mm-hmm. there's a bunch of uh, bunch of. I mean, it was a great group of guys. So I keep in touch with a lot of them. Mm-hmm. I got I got your number through Adam Polanski, so you can uh, blame another pitcher uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, for that. Um, nice. Any any, fa- ever, any favorite part about UNF uh, Jacksonville that you miss? Um, yeah, just about everything, really. It was. Uh, I still go back um, pretty good bit. Like I mean, especially being so convenient, being in Florida and stuff. Um, but actually a lot of my best friends from home after they graduated from college, they got jobs in Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. And of course it was after I was already gone. So I'm like, of course you guys want to come when I'm gone. But Mm -hmm. uh, like three or four of my best friends from, from here live there now. So I have even more, more friends from college and from home uh, that, that live there. So I, I always have an excuse to go back and uh, yeah, I definitely, uh, I miss the beach. I mean, I get the beach here too, but I miss going to the beach and uh, I mean the, the campus really and and just being with the teammates. Uh, it's probably what I miss most. Mm-hmm. Good beach too, you know, Gulf Beach yeah. and then Atlantic uh, Beach. Definitely a little bit different, but uh, both will work. So I was going through your Twitter actually, and you had a list of vi- uh, movies. Um, were those movies that you have not seen yet? Uh, I am embarrassed to say yes. Okay. Uh, I, I had not seen any of those movies and people were. You getting were, some flack for that? I mean, I should, honestly, it's fair <laughs> because that's one thing I realized when it, it popped up this spring training when I was talking to my locker, my locker buddy and he said something about, I don't remember what movie it was, but he's just like, remember that part in that movie? And it was like, a, I don't remember what movie it was, but it was like a something that you should have seen. And I was like, yeah, I have no idea what you're talking about. He's like, dude, you have to watch this movie. So that's where I got the idea. And then with everything getting canceled, um, I knew I'd have some time on my hands. So I, I, put, I asked a couple of my other buddies who are, I would call them movie nerds. They, uh, they know all kind of movies and stuff. They, I asked recommendations for like must-see movies that you know are, are good and came up with a massive list. So yeah. Um, I'm kind of working my way through that. I've been slacking a little bit because not too many of them are on Netflix or anything. Yeah. Um, so, but the best one so far, or the best two, I would say, are Knives Out, which is that one's more recent. Yep. 
and uh, The Fugitive, which is way older, but it's really good. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that list, and I can't say that I'm a movie buff either. I'll, I'll watch, you know, here and there. I, I'd say I have the standard knowledge of the general yeah. population. Um, yeah. Not really anything past that. The one that I was like, you know, he needs he needs to see Saving Private Ryan. I mean, that's you know that that's yeah. a must see. Um, that's that's definitely a classic, and not not too far back. But so going off of um, Twitter, you have a favorite Twitter follow? Uh, I think anybody that is involved in baseball at all would probably tell you pitching ninja. Um, yes. Yes. It's, that's, <laughs> it's kind of tough to beat. Honestly, it's, uh, that's probably the main reason I get on Twitter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> kind right. of see what he's coming up with. Pitching ninja has really come on the last couple of years. I, I got to give it to him. Um, yeah. Eddie Miller got on pitching ninja last year and I was, I was very envious of him. I mean, definitely happy yep. for him, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but envious. I mean, the creativity is, is, is unmatched. I mean, when you get backyard baseball um, it, videos on pitching ninja too, it's just a collision yep. of the best and best of both. Worlds. 100%. So. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of the, a lot of his favorite or like a lot of the guys who he has a lot of their content on his Twitter or a lot of the guys that I I like to watch anyway, so I just I eat it up. Yeah, that that I'll I'll catch myself scrolling late night Twitter scrolling. I just you know killing time doing that. One of my favorites that is um, Brett a Brett Gardner. I think he uh, I think he threw his helmet or something, and he even did a a the pitching tail a pitching tail yeah. with the with the. <laughs> yeah. Very, the very clever. That's the content yeah. we need. Is right, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that that's what we get lost in. Um, going off of that, do you have a favorite pitcher to watch, uh, active or non-active? Either one's fine. Um, yeah, I have a lot, but uh, definitely Max Scherzer. Um, somebody who I look up to. I I love his like demeanor on the mound and his. Uh, <laughs> His aggressiveness uh, is something I, I really appreciate. And obviously, he's one of the best pitchers in the world, too. So, yeah. Um, and actually working out in the offseason, we go um, – I, I live in Jupiter in the offseason and work out at Cressy Sports Performance, and he is down there sometimes, too. So, um, being in the same gym with him and everything, too, is a little uh, a little extra motivation. Or it's uh, – He's he's definitely somebody I, I I watch all of his stuff. Yeah, he he he's a different guy, very yeah. different, and it's it's refreshing at the same time though to see somebody they care so much about about pitching. Um, his interviews are 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 fun too. So yeah, I mean he pitched with a broken nose and a black eye or whatever it was. I mean that that's always you know yeah it's always brownie that's, points for the guy. Yeah, <laughs> that's right up his alley too. So yeah. yeah, he probably liked that. To be honest, you probably <laughs> like. <laughs> yeah. probably it's, it's, no di- it's no different in the gym either. He just he gets mm-hmm. after it like like you would expect. Mm-hmm. So, are you uh, ever been a seeds guy on the field? Obviously, it's a little different as a pitcher. Seeds can kind of throw you off, but ever been a seeds guy on the mound? Um, not on the mound, no. Mm-hmm. I uh, especially in the days as a starter, where like you know you're not involved with anything in the game. You're yep. just watching. Uh, you'll, you'll find yourself just running through a bunch of seeds. Um, and then there's some in the bullpen most times too, but, uh, I'll dabble a little bit, but I don't definitely not when I'm pitching. Yeah. Um, but I'll have a few, you know, before I pitch during the game sometimes. Especially if you're pitching in Florida and you're starting, I mean, that's just a recipe for cramps. I mean, we don't need all that <laughs> extra sodium. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's not, not usually the best thing to do. No. Um, is there a, is there a favorite, um, favorite brand favorite favorite flavor um i think you gotta go buffalo ranch uh david david's probably, yeah. probably the best it's a sneaky one but i i do like uh i do like spits too mm-hmm. i mean all of their flavors are pretty good so. Mm-hmm. so buffalo style ranch is a winner uh definitely i would say is my favorite david's um Growing up as a guy up in the Midwest, Giants was pretty popular. Yep. I, yeah, I don't know if they're they've seen themselves down here as much, but Giants Kettle Cooked is a really good recommendation. Yep, so, we had a lot of those up in the uh, up in the Northeast this year in uh, in New Hampshire and Buffalo. I think we had we had Giants. So yeah, that's, that's had my not, fair share. 
Yeah, <laughs> rightfully so. So uh, any, any other goals for, for this, the, the lockdown period? Any other baseball or personal goals that you'd like to share? Um, man, I, I'm kind of trying to become a trivia guru uh, with this downtime. So I'm watching all of the, uh, the collections on, uh, on Netflix of Jeopardy. Good. And I'm a huge, huge Alex Trebek fan. So I just, I eat that up. Um, mm-hmm. Got a couple books too. So I'm thinking in the near future, uh, I'll be a, like a bar trivia champion. That, so that's kind of a personal goal of mine. That's always good bragging rights. I mean, you can never, <laughs> never go wrong with impressing people with some trivia. Um, exactly. I, I endorse that fully as well. Alex Trebek, <laughs> shout out. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, um, well, great, Brian. I really appreciate it. Good luck with the trivia. Good, good luck with the, uh, the creative training um, as well. Appreciate Do it. what you can. Thank you for your time. And uh, I know when you think, get things back in order, we'll be watching. Absolutely, man. Thanks for having me. Appreciate of it. Of course. So thank you for that, Brian. Thanks for taking the time today. Please stay safe, stay healthy. Good luck when it comes time to competing again. And good luck on that movie list. So before we take off, continue to follow everything that's going on in UNF Athletics as we continue to post content all across our social media accounts, UNF Ospreys on Twitter, North Florida Ospreys on Facebook, all the sports-specific Twitter accounts, and UNF Ospreys on Instagram and on unfospreys.com. And we're looking back on each of our seasons, spring seasons included, honoring spring seniors during what would have been the ASUN championship dates and posting Osprey Today content featuring some of our greatest moments in history. Thanks for listening, and we'll be seeing you guys next week.